Artificial intelligence is just like politics. Everybody loves to talk about it, but at the same time, very few people actually understand how it exactly works and what it is. And if you're like me, you used to think that artificial intelligence was a science fiction concept. But then lately, you hear quite a lot of serious people, researchers talking about it, and you don't quite get it. Well, we do associate AI with movies, with Terminator, with Star Wars, and that makes it a little bit fictional to us, a little bit unrealistic. Another problem is that AI is a very broad concept, and it varies from our phones through self-driving cars to something that can change our lives dramatically. And so all of this is very confusing, and we as humans tend to be afraid of the things we do not understand. So my goal is to help you understand AI a little bit better, to be a little bit less scared and a little bit more excited about its development. So what is AI? Artificial intelligence, sometimes called AI, is the theory and development of computer systems, which are supposed to be doing the same tasks as we humans can do. And that includes machine vision, natural language processing, language translation, and so on. But does that actually mean that our human intelligence is nothing more than just a sum of the abilities to hear, see, and speak? Well, I hope not, because that would be just very sad. <laughs> so let's think, what else do we know about intelligence? Being intelligent is something that we wish other people think about us. We know from school that dolphins are intelligent animals, right? And nowadays, even if we go to an electro store, we can find a lot of intelligent home appliances there. Confusing again. And so let's take those as an example. An electric ion can react to one particular state, becoming too hot, and then it switches itself off, which is supposedly making it intelligent. But do you think this is intelligence? I don't think so, because the iron has only one program put in it. It's pre-programmed for one scenario, getting too hot, turning itself off, and that's it. And it hasn't even learned that through an experience, so we cannot call it truly intelligent machine. And we, as humans, can never do things right basing on the precise instructions only. We try to, we rarely give up on that, but it doesn't always work quite as we expected. Because instructions are never enough to learn how to do something. If you remember how all of us were learning how to walk, being a baby, was it just your mother telling you that, you know, now you stand still, you put your weight in the left leg, you bend your right leg, you put it forward, boom, you know how to walk? Not really, would have been nice, but not yet. Because the trick is, baby can never learn basing on the instructions only. Baby needs to practice all the previous steps and master each of them. It firstly needs to learn how to sit, then how to stand, then how to walk. But after it learned how to walk, and that's the beauty. Baby can do absolutely anything with his legs. Baby can run, baby can jog, jump, walk backwards, anything you can imagine. And baby doesn't need a million of very precise instructions for each case, for each task, because it understood the concept, right? But at the same time, everything which we call AI these days is something like an advanced ion. It can only do one thing. These things are sometimes seems complicated to us. It can do these things on the same level as humans, and sometimes even better than humans. But still, every particular time, it's just one narrow task. And that's why the current state-of-the-art AI is called narrow AI. If you ask an AI which can play chess, to play poker with you, for example, it wouldn't be able to do so, because these two are completely different tasks. The trick is that all, this seems, uh, all these things seem very complicated to us as humans, but at the same time, they have very clear rules on how to progress with those. And that's why these things are simple for AI, but at the same time, the things we do without thinking, the natural things such as vision, motion, perception, is something which is almost impossible to teach AI to do because these are the skills we cannot define in zeros and ones, and they only seem natural to us because we, as humans, got that kind of as a gift over the thousands of years of human evolution, 
And that's why it's easy, and that's why it's natural. So while modern AI can do only one narrow task, what we try to do in our research group, Good AI, is to create an AI which would possess the ability to learn. Because this, we believe, is going to change the rules of the game dramatically. How do we make an AI learn? How does it learn thing? The answer is gradually, just like humans, step by step, just as baby from the very beginning to a more complicated tasks. One of the approaches to teaching AI is actually very similar to making kids do something, to working with kids at school. If you have your baby and you want to motivate it to do something, to do some task, for example, do the homework, then you motivate the baby to take the action by giving a positive reward, like a bar of chocolate. You did a homework, that's really good, carry on. And so after that, the baby or an AI realizes that this is good, it's on the right track, and it keeps repeating the action to receive the positive reward as long as needed before it actually learns something. This particular approach is called reinforcement learning, but the approaches are numerous. The key is to keep the direction from the simple tasks to the more complicated ones and to make sure that AI doesn't forget the things it learned in the first place, but keeps reusing those skills over and over to obtain even new ones, even more skills. And after that, instead of having an AI which can play one game, we will be able to have an AI which learned how to play any game. And then it can learn how to play video games. And then it can design its own video game, and then it can design anything you can think of and then it can think of something to design and then design it, and so on, and so on. This should be truly exciting, and this is what we call general purpose AI. We try to achieve general purpose AI as fast as possible. And this is because future is coming, and future is coming much faster than we all think. AI research is now in its very beginning. The general purpose AI is not yet created and we don't know how long is it going to take. But that's why in the beginning of the research, the cost of sharing the ideas is very low, while at the same time the benefit for the bright minds to co cooperate together and crack this problem is very big. Another nice thing is that computing power is so far very well controlled and we are not yet that dependent on the computers to wake up one morning to realize that, you know, they've taken the whole world over. And I know this was meant to be a joke, but I know that most of you get really scared at the moment, because AI seems scary to a lot of people, right? And people believe that AI is likely to take their jobs and to replace them as humans. Well, I've been thinking about this as well, a lot, and I believe that there were many cases in history when something like that, a new technology, was also taken in a similar way. I would like to introduce you one piece of technology which was supposed to replace thousands of people on their jobs. And everybody hated that and nobody wanted that introduced. What do you think that might be? There are many options, right? But this is one of them. Remember, there were actually people out there on the crossroads, navigating the traffic out in the cold, risking their lives every day. Do you think it's better that now we can rely on the technology to coordinate the traffic, and those people can stay in the warm offices to coordinate that, or even do something completely different? I believe this is the beauty of the technology, and it is very important to understand that AI is nothing more than just a tool, just something to help us do different things better, something to augment our capabilities, but not a whole different scary thing. How many of you have been possibly dreaming of studying history or arts, becoming an artist, but then ended up being, for example, an accountant, because that's something more practical and that gets paid better? Well, I believe that there are many cases like that, and once the invoices will be able to sort out themselves, we as humanity, will have a chance to appreciate the art more and do the things we really feel like doing. But this is the bright side, but at the same time, there is more to the motivation of having AI as soon as possible. And this is because our brains are reaching their <coughs> limits. And that's unfortunately very serious. With terabytes of data being generated around us every day with our computers, with our cell phones, we just don't catch up with that. 
As humanity, we cannot progress on many research problems, and we cannot progress with the space exploration, for example. Because space is abstract and remote and, you know, that big. And our head is just of this size. And then our brains are just limited to the size of our head. While at the same time, computers can grow as big as we can imagine. That would allow them to be more fast, more efficient than us humans. What is more important is that computer transistors are also much more reliable than our brain neurons. Because I can complain that I have a headache pretty much every week, you know, and I cannot work when I have a headache. And computers can work 24 per 7 on their peak performance every day, nonstop, which I believe is exciting and it would be a shame not to use that. Finally, it is okay when computer breaks. But it's not okay if anybody dies during the research. And that's, unfortunately, what's holding us back in the progress a lot. That the cost of the new discovery is, in many cases, measured by humans' lives. When we talk about space exploration again, we cannot send a cosmonaut further than for a distance of a human's lifetime. Because that wouldn't just be fair, you know, and that's why we cannot progress on those problems. And humans, right now, are the only creatures in the whole universe that can make decisions in the unknown circumstances. And if we manage to train our general purpose AI to make those decisions, if we manage to make it explore space or do many other things, then I believe we can progress much further in the scientific progress. For example, in the medicine, it would be amazing to have access to the knowledge of all the doctors in the universe at once, you know, having an algorithm which would be able to create an optimal treatment course for every patient, basing on this knowledge. And that would allow us to save even more lives, and that's what AI can do for us. And then, the cherry on the cake is that if AI can possibly solve any problem, do you think it can solve the problem of solving problems? There is actually a research term for that. We call that point singularity. And that looks very exciting, but it's not coming anytime soon, I guess. However, we must start right now to make that happen. And as you might imagine now, creating something like that is a very difficult task. And in my research group, we're just 20 people. So how can something like that, you know, be created by just 20 people? Well, the good thing is that AI is very hyped these days. That's the reason you're listening to me right now. And that's the reason why many people feel excited to be part of the research. Another good thing is that nobody needs a very particular set of skills to be able to become an AI researcher. People with very different backgrounds can come together to work on AI. And all of that creates a perfect momentum to leverage something called citizen science. Citizen science is a concept of opening and outsourcing the research problems to the general crowd, to people who might be interested to participate and contribute to the progress. And for that, we have recently launched a competition called General AI Challenge. This is a competition where people from all over the world could contribute to the development. The first round was devoted to the problem of gradual learning, of learning step by step, and people were programming their own AI agent able to solve some tasks. Today, we were announcing the winners of this first round, and it's exciting to see that they come from very different backgrounds. We actually have an astronaut there. We have a quantum physicist, we have people of all different kinds, and it's exciting to see how all of them can contribute to this goal. Now we're preparing a second round, which would be devoted to the question of how can we avoid AI development becoming a race between different researchers, and how to deploy AI in businesses safely. So basically, no matter whether you have a programming background or social sciences background, each of you gets an opportunity to join us on this exciting journey to give us a hand in creating safe and beneficial general-purpose AI. Exciting, right? <laughs> what I want you to keep in my mind, what I want you to keep in your mind after my talk, are just three things. The first one, the zero one, is the general AI challenge which you can participate in. 
And then the first one is that our brains are incredible, and the most precious ability we possess is the ability to learn. That comes from experience, and that's how we learn things. And AI is learning things in the very same way too, step by step. What is even more important is that AI is just a tool for us to be better, for us to do things better, and not a separate species. The second thing is that general purpose AI can be worth more than anything. Because this is ultimately a leverage to any technology, any science, any process. It can optimize plenty of things. But in order to create that, the collaboration between researchers needs to start right now. And then finally, right here, right now, is the best moment in the whole history to start working on the AI. Because the ingredients to having a good AI are essentially just three. It's having computing power, it's having data, and it's having algorithms. And so guess what? Computing power has never been cheaper than today. Algorithms for inspiration are being open sourced each day, and we're droning with data, with terabytes of it being generated each second. So we have everything we need. And if you have ever been dreaming of being born in some other time to witness some amazing technology emerging or new discoveries being made, then with AI you actually don't have to dream because the golden age of AI is right here. It's right now. And everybody can join us on this journey. I am planning to have a very cool story to tell my kids about how their mommy helped to make the future happen. And each of you can have one too. So join us, and thank you.